Welcome to an impromptu midweek video. We are going spraying using my new auto steer. I think it's actually going to work. And if it doesn't work, it is going to be extremely obvious because we are going to spray the reseed that we done two months ago. And it's absolutely full of weeds. So if we miss any bits when we're using the new auto steer, it should be very, very obvious. We'll keep this video short and to the point. I have two and a half hectares to spray. We're gonna put on 300 liters of water a hectare, which means we need 750 liters-ish, and we're spraying Talia at one liter per hectare, which is what is recommended for a reseed. A top tip I only discovered this year is that there's a little knife on the caps to cut the foil. No one ever told me that. Close enough. Before we head off, let's check that everything's working with the auto steer. Our wheel angle sensor is working, so that means the auto steer is working. We don't have a fix on our RTK, but we do have a float, which is gonna be accurate enough. And I've also updated the code to make the following algorithm more accurate. We are now using a very simple version of something called Pure Pursuit. I have tested this earlier on today and it worked amazingly well, surprisingly well. So I think this is gonna work. I think we're gonna be able to spray a field using auto steer, which I built myself. How mental is that? I really don't wanna run out of spray, so I might just fill this to the top. Yeah, let's fill it to the top and maybe add in the rest of the spray. I'm sure I can find some weeds after milking if I do have some left. Because the last time I went and sprayed this field when I was killing it off, I misjudged how big it was and I ran out of spray. And I really don't want that to happen this time. So that's now 1.25 liters a hectare. At the minute, I'm around 70% sure that this is gonna work well enough that I can claim I've sprayed my field using auto steer. Right, let's go take a look at the field. It's actually not that bad for weeds at all. I was told it was terrible and I haven't seen this in probably like four or five weeks. Well, maybe like three weeks. It's hard to keep track. It's very patchy. I think it probably needs some fertilizer. I'll maybe get that done later on this evening as well and leave this field ready to grow a lot of grass and hopefully, hopefully, still get two cuts of silage off it this year. Right, let's go round the field once, record our AB lines and see if our auto steer can complete the field. Living poverty spec booms. It's not so bad when you're doing one field. Let's see if you have a day of spraying. Having to get out and fold up and unfold your booms every time gets very old. I almost forgot you all. Okay, let's go. Turn up to spray. Four wheel drive. Turn on paint. And we will record our AB line now. Yeah, record our AB line now. And then we're ready for auto steer guidance once we complete our headland. Do bear in mind, this is very much still extremely early days. I still have to add in the ability to turn and join in the next AB line. And I still have to add in the ability to auto steer around the headland. What I want from this test is more information to know what I have to improve next. I did build a simulation into this to get it to this point, but a simulation can only tell you so much. AB line's done. It definitely needs fertilizer. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I meant to sow this for fertilizer like three weeks ago and I totally forgot. And it's one of them fields which you never ever drive past. So it's kind of out of sight, out of mind but I'll get some fertilizer on it this evening. So hopefully there'll be no harm done. Even to just drive in a straight line along this hedge, it does require pretty constant steering wheel inputs. So that's the benchmark is how much I'm having to turn the wheel.
Okay, I had to re-record my AV lines because I forgot to set my working with the 10 meters. But now we're ready to go. So, oh my goodness, I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, engaging auto steer. And the wheel's active. And we want to set a look at a distance to one second. No, not 11, one second. The wheel is engaged. Turn on our sprayer. Turn on our sprayer. Okay, our sprayer is going and our auto steer is going. Oh my goodness, please let this work. You can see our line on the left. And we are bang on track. Can you see that? I know it's quite sunny. But we are right on the line. Oh my days, this is actually working. I can't believe this is actually working. Let's go faster. It just done an S-bend. There was an S-bend in the line and it done it perfectly. I cannot believe this is working. No way. This is gonna make filming videos so much easier. I have two hands free now. How does it look? Does it look like it's getting the distance correct? We are 24 centimeters off our guidance line. Again, this is very early days. We are not at the point of fine tuning to get perfection. We are very much at the point of try and get it to follow a guidance line and figure out what problems we're gonna hit. Okay, we're at the end of the line, let's turn around. Disengage, disengage, turn around. Let's see how it turns on to a line if we don't line up perfectly, because that'll be a good piece of information for when we try and automate the headland turns. So we've picked up the new line, engaging auto steer, oh it disengaged, engaging auto steer, and we're straight onto the line. I forgot to turn on my sprayer. No! Straight onto the new line. Unbelievable, look at that. Eight centimeters off. I cannot believe this is working. Nine centimeters off. How is this working? How have I built auto steer? I'm gonna be honest with you, this was way easier than I expected. Like, I have done way more complicated code than the code to make auto steer work. Now, I do understand it's early days. I still have to automate the headlands, automate the headland turns, and make it accurate enough that you could mow with it. And I'm pretty sure that's where the complication is gonna come from. But just to get an auto steer system working, has actually been fairly straightforward. He says, as we are 36 centimeters offline, <laughs> that's close enough that I could barely drive at that accuracy. So it's still more than acceptable, especially considering this is the second attempt, the second iteration of the code. Right, I'll not keep these here any longer. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on how the auto steer is going. And it's going pretty well. I'm gonna take a thumbnail and I'll see you at the weekend for a normal Saturday video. The plan at the minute is that we will have grass mowed down and we will be lifting silage. I hope. The weather forecast really doesn't look too good. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this little short midweek video, let me know in the comments. Please do give it a like as it helps to share it with new people. And if you want even more detail, on how this auto steer is actually working and to be part of the journey of solving the problems of getting it to turn at the headlands and making it more accurate. Hit that subscribe button because there will be plenty more to come. See you in a couple of days. Okay, impromptu extra bit of this video. And this is really for the nerds. So after I stopped filming in the field, I realized a pattern. We were consistently off to one side. So at one point driving down the fields, I was consistently off by 40 to 50 centimeters to the right. And then I reset the GPS. And then when I was going back up the field, we were consistently off by 20 centimeters to the left. And I know the reason for it, essentially that the zero position for our wheels was slightly wrong, but I couldn't quite figure out why it was a consistent distance wrong. But after mulling it over in my head for the last hour, I have figured it out and it's really, really interesting. So I thought I would share it with all of you at the end of this video. So to explain what was going wrong or why we were getting that 
error. We are going to use the two examples. Being 50 centimeters off pretty much consistently and being 20 centimeters off again pretty much consistently. And what is happening is that the tractor is finding the distance away from our guidance line which corresponds to the steering correction angle which ends up being zero degrees in reality. So for example when we were 50 centimeters off to the right the GPS was commanding the tractor to steer 40 degrees left to try and correct for the offset but that 40 degrees of steering angle to the left was actually when our wheels were straight. And then if you think about being 20 centimeters away from the guidance line, that would correspond, for example, to a steering angle of 20 degrees to the left, which means that our zero position is actually 20 degrees of steering to the left. Does that make sense? So the way we're gonna solve that error is to add in some smart code. Some code which looks at how far we've been away from the line, whether we are getting closer on average or the distance away is stationary and stable, and then it will correct our steering center position if we are not actually moving further or closer away from the line to say, that that angle should now be zero. Does that all make sense? Such a cool problem to have to solve. And why are we getting these errors in the first place? Well, I think it's to do with the fact that as we steer our wheel and then disengage the auto steer and manually steer at the headlands, lots of little tiny errors are adding up. And when you're dealing with a tractor trying to drive a distance, even a very small error in where our center line position is causes your tractor to veer left or right. So there really isn't a possibility that you would just get your zero degrees to be your wheel straight. Instead, you need some code which can adapt and learn from the information that is gathering when the wheels are straight so that you can dynamically update the zero position in real time. Man, this project is cool. I love getting like little problems like that, which I can just mull over in my head and try and solve and then write some computer code and implement a fix. It's so satisfying. Anyway, just to add a little bit in. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on Saturday.